the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And as we prepare to celebrate this Eucharist, let us say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Welcome this morning, the third Sunday of Easter. And uh, this morning we're going to be thinking about why, why we meet every Sunday. Why do we have the Eucharist service? What's it about? And how does that relate to the very famous Gospel story today? So I'd like you to think about those things this morning. I hope you're all well. And even if you can't go outside very much, I hopefully you're enjoying the fine weather. So it's great to be able to speak with you today. Now, as we prepare to celebrate this Holy Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, Glory to God in the highest. Let us pray. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us, that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life, and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, he was alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. 
On the day of Pentecost, Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptised every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptised, and that day about 3,000 persons were added to their number. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the response to the psalm. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. The cords of death entangled me, the grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfil my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfil my vows to the, to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Alleluia! Gracious is the Lord and righteous. A reading from the first letter of Peter. If you invoke as father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, to the living and enduring word of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we're going to sing a hymn. This is the day. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day when He rose again, when He rose again. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This 
says the Lord and the living one. I was dead and behold I am alive forevermore. to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On that same day, two of the disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? Jesus asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning. And when they did not find his body there, they came back, and they told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory. Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he, inter he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. 
Then their eyes are opened and they recognise Jesus and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, I'm sorry, something's wrong with my computer. It keeps making these funny noises, so apologies about that. Hopefully it will stop in a minute. I don't know what's wrong with it. Sorry for the interruptions. Um, anyway, I remember a couple of years ago I had a phone call, and um, it was on my landline. And um, I don't usually answer the landline because um, quite often it's people trying to sell you things, isn't it? And you don't really want to necessarily speak to them. Uh, anyway, or, or it might be my mother-in-law, she uses the landline. Um, anyway, usually. A couple of years ago that my landline went and I answered it and there was a voice on the other side and he went, Hi, Vinny. Um, how are you? And I thought, who's that? I recognised that voice, but I just couldn't quite place it. I said, hi, you're Vinny. And uh, he started saying, oh, how's, um, how's Michelle and how's Clara? And how are things in Enfield? How's the teaching going? And I thought, who on earth is this? They know, they know an awful lot about me, but I just couldn't think who this person was. And they kept talking and talking at me. And a minute went by. And then another minute, and he was still talking, and I thought, at some point I'm going to have to ask who this person is. But you know the situation, don't you? You just don't want to admit to it. <laughs> you don't want to admit to not knowing who the person is talking. And the longer you leave it, the worse it gets, of course. And then this guy started saying, Vinny, you know, what about, what guitars have you got these days? And then the penny dropped. If someone's calling me Vinny, it's probably someone from my school days. Not many people call me Vinny these days. So someone from my school days. And I know someone from my school days who absolutely loves guitars. It's my friend Ray. And I thought, yes, <laughs> I know who it is. The penny dropped. <laughs> and I was saved at the embarrassment of asking who he was because I suddenly, it all clicked into place in my head who this person was. And with great confidence, I said, Hey, Ray, how are you? How are the, you know, etc. How are the kids, etc. You know, um, the penny dropped. I didn't recognise who this person was for quite a few minutes on the phone, but eventually the penny dropped. And um, in today's gospel reading, the penny drops for those two disciples walking on the road to Emmaus. We don't know their names. Oh, actually, we do. We know one of their names. He's called Cleopas. But we don't know the name of the other person. Maybe it might be even be his wife, or, you know, we just don't know. Anyway, they're walking along to the road, uh, they're, wa they're walking along the road to Emmaus, away from Jerusalem, and they're having a chat with each other. And um, it's on the day when Jesus rose from the dead. But they don't quite get that yet. They just don't quite get that, okay? So they're walking along. They're having a chat and this person comes up to them and joins in with their conversation. And he says, what are you talking about? And they say, well, all, these, all this stuff happened in Jerusalem. Don't you know about it? Don't you know about Jesus, this, uh, this prophet who, who died on the cross and um, he said he was going to rise again? Um, he said he was going to free us from, our, our, uh, you know, from the slavery of of everything and you know we, we just don't know what's going on and this person begins to talk to them and of course this person is Jesus himself the risen Lord 
he meets these two disciples on the road and they don't recognize him okay a bit like me and my my phone call i just didn't recognize who was on the phone these guys just or whoever they were they just didn't understand that jesus was in their presence and then uh, jesus and they've got the wrong end of the stick because they expected jesus probably to be this great messiah who would um free uh, free Israel from the Romans and be this mighty leader and um, but their hopes are dashed this mighty leader this great person Jesus who went around doing these wonderful things he's put to death on the cross like a criminal and they just can't compute this in their heads and they, they're perhaps crestfallen disappointed they just don't get it like, what's going on why did our Messiah our promised Messiah just die like a, a common crook on a cross. Anyway, they've got the wrong end of the stick. And Jesus, even though they don't know it's Jesus, is beginning to correct them. And he goes through the Bible, doesn't he? He goes through the prophets, saying how everything in the scriptures, which for those disciples would have been what we call the Old Testament today, how they, or the Old Testament foretells Jesus himself speaks of Jesus his suffering but then his glory and that's what they don't understand these two people walk into Emmaus they don't understand that the path to glory which Jesus took and which we can follow in him entails a degree of suffering and a journey to the cross so they're beginning to think oh this guy something special about him they finally get to Emmaus about seven miles away from Jerusalem and Jesus is about to walk on but they say no come come my friend come we'll invite you in for some dinner we'll invite you in for some uh, something to eat so they get inside to someone's house and then Jesus takes the bread he breaks he blesses it he breaks it and then they understand who this person is the scales fall from their eyes. They suddenly realise that they've been walking along this road with Jesus himself, the risen Jesus himself. Once they realise that Jesus is in their midst, in the breaking of the bread, then they go back to Jerusalem and they go and see the other disciples. Their journey, they turn around in other words, they're going away from Jerusalem, they meet Christ, and then they go back to Jerusalem. What are we to make of this story? Well, it's a wonderful story because actually it's what we do in the church. This is what I was uh, mentioning at the beginning of uh, Mass. Um, every Sunday we meet for the Eucharist, don't we? Um, and the Eucharist is, is, is kind of structured with two bits to it. We have the liturgy of the word, and then we have the liturgy of, the, of communion itself afterwards, the, the breaking of the bread. And the structure of the Mass, the service we are, we're doing this morning and every Sunday and during the week as well, follows the story of Emmaus in a quite a remarkable way. At the beginning of the service, don't we, the Eucharist service, at the beginning of Mass, we hear God's word. Jesus Christ revealed in the scriptures the liturgy of the word. So when you're in Mass, when you're in church on Sunday, try not to have a little sleep through the, the readings, you know, perhaps you're up Saturday night quite late and, uh, you know, try and have a good listen and engage with it. Because it's the word of life. Jesus Christ is present in those words. God is sharing with us his love letter to the world. Whenever I see Bishop Rob, the Bishop of Edmonton, he always describes the scriptures as a love letter to, um, uh, to humanity. And that's what it is. We're hearing this love letter made perfect, perfectly revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. That's why at the beginning of our service we have the readings. That's why after the gospel reading, which is about Jesus himself, in his uh, walking around in his time, then we have the word preached. We have a sermon or a homily. 
So that's the first section of the Mass, the Liturgy of the Word. Jesus revealed in the Scriptures. And that's what he does on the road to Emmaus, doesn't he? He's talking to those two guys, or man and the woman, whoever they are. And he's going through the Scriptures with them. And their hearts are burning. I don't know if you've had that experience when you listen to the Word of God and your heart starts to burn. Something inside you fills you with a, a great love, a burning love. That's what those two disciples had as they listened to Christ interpret the scriptures for them. And then they get to Emmaus. And that brings us to the second part of Mass, where we have the liturgy of the sacrament. We have Holy Communion, don't we? The priest blesses the bread. He breaks the bread. And then normally... God, and I hope this will finish soon, normally the whole congregation shares in this bread. God is revealed in the breaking of the bread, in Holy Communion. That's why we meet round the table. We make present Christ and the sacrifice he made for us on the cross. We make it present in a beautifully, wonderfully loving way at the table. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Christ is present in the Eucharist. That's what happens in the Emmaus, doesn't it? They invite Jesus into their homes and they have a meal. Jesus blesses the bread. He breaks it and they suddenly realise who he is. He's suddenly present in their midst. And that's a wonderful image of the Eucharist itself. Of Christ being present with the breaking of bread. So think of that in a moment when myself or, and, and you know, next week, Father Tone, whoever's celebrating Mass, think about Christ being present there in our midst. Now I long for the day when this lockdown is over and we can meet back in church and we can share this meal together so that you may be spiritually nourished through the body and blood of Christ. But even so, Christ is present in our midst through the breaking of bread. And you are at the table this morning watching this, even if you can't eat it yourself this morning. But you are present. What happens to the disciples, those two disciples, after Christ has been revealed in the word, after Christ has been revealed in the breaking of bread? They go back to Jerusalem. They go back the way they came. In other words, their lives have been reorientated. And that's what Mass does. When we meet on a Sunday, we hear Christ revealed in the Word. We experience his presence in the Eucharist, in, the body and, in his body and blood, the bread and the wine. When we experience that, our lives are reorientated like those two disciples in this morning's story we start going back the way we should be back towards Jerusalem back towards the heart of God our lives are turned around through the revelation of God through the liturgy isn't that wonderful and then when our lives are turned around we're ready for mission we're ready to share the good news of Jesus Christ crucified and then risen from the dead. And the hope and the joy and the peace that message gives to people. When we've gone to Emmaus ourselves and turned our hearts around through the liturgy of the word and of the sacrament, we are then ready to share that news with the rest of the world. Like those two did when they got back to Jerusalem. And they shared what they'd seen with the others. So, have a wonderful week. I hope that, take this story in the Bible today seriously. Go home and read it and ponder it in your heart. What's it mean to you? It means the great glory of the church liturgy. Revealing Christ in our midst today 
and may God richly bless you today and all the days of your life through his Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. And now let us say the creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Heavenly Father, we lift up to you the church. May we be a church energised today by the revealing of your Son through the Word and through the breaking of bread. May we be strengthened by your Spirit to go out and share the good news with others through both our words and our deeds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for unity in the church. We pray for the day when every Christian can come round your table and share the body and blood of your Son and proclaim you in one voice, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the leaders of the church. We pray for Pope Francis. We pray for the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby. We pray for the Ecumenical Patriarch, Bartholomew. We pray for the leaders of the various Protestant churches across the globe. And more locally, Lord, we lift up to you the Bishop of London, Sarah, the Bishop of Edmonton, Rob. We pray for our Archdeacon, Father John, our Area Dean, Father Stuart. And we, pray, we pray for Father Taman as he leads us in the parish of Freezing Water. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we lift up to you the persecuted church. We pray for our brothers and sisters across the globe, where to call your son Lord can result in persecution, imprisonment and even death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the church and its relationship with other world faiths. May there be peace and harmony amongst us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Father, we lift up to you St George Freezy Water in Enfield. We pray, Lord, that we may be a beacon of light to those around us and also for those watching via Facebook. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we lift up to you the world. We pray, Lord, for an end to this terrible coronavirus outbreak. We pray, Lord, for the day when our lives can return to normal. We pray for those poor people who have lost loved ones because of this disease. And we pray for those people who are incredibly ill because of it. We pray for those who are isolated because of it as well and lonely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the leaders of the world. We pray for the Queen. We pray for our Prime Minister, Boris Johnson. We pray for the government. We pray for the health of the political life of this country. We pray for all those in authority over us, that they may have wisdom, humility and a desire to serve. And Lord, we lift up to the leaders of the world, particularly those who have taken a wrong path, that their hearts might be changed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we lift up to you the sick. We pray for those who are ill in mind, body or spirit. We pray for those watching this, that they might be healed and our friends and family on our hearts. In this parish, Lord, we particularly remember Pauline Stathers, Doreen Flint, Ron Painter, Claudia Berner, Susie Anthony, Sue Lee, Heather Anderson, Diana Jones, Barbara Baker, Luke Sheehan, Violet Pockrant, Emma Evans, Father Alan Cross, Patricia Ray, Miranda Kernley, Kathleen Hawkins, Dory Lynch, Davidson Sukansing, Jeanette Sukansing, Tony Betts, Barbara Croft, Jean Deakin, Patricia Maloney, Maudie Fox, Michael Shine, and Ian Crofts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we pray for those who have recently departed. We pray for Charles Lambkin, Beatrice Boto, Jeff Howson. Cheryl Williams, John Mason, Danny Willoughby, and Reverend Linda Livisich. And Lord, we also remember those whose anniversary of death occur this week. Hilda Cocker, Thomas Crockett, Stanley Furse, Arthur Bush, Edna Eglinton, George Mills, Raina Smith, William Ball, Albert Blacher, Lewis Ritzer, Juliet Mason, Mark Laporte, William Frost, Morris Valentine, James Cooper, Albert Phillips and Thomas Langley. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Amen. And now please spend a moment in silence bringing your own prayers to our Heavenly Father.
we say together, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Peace be with you, brothers and sisters. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up our hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, 
and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so Father calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Mary, the Mother of God, of the Apostles, of the Martyrs, of St. George, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, Forever and ever. Amen. And now let us pray with confidence in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
We'll just sing a hymn, um, He is Lord. I don't know if you know it, some of you might know it. He is Lord, He is Lord, He is risen from the dead and He is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Let us pray. Living God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in all his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Um, once again, can I just say sorry for the, the noise coming from my computer. Um, I think a friend of mine sent me a song to learn because he's a musician and um, he sent it on a file and these things keep popping up and it's very difficult to get rid of them. So apologies for that. I'll have it sorted for next time. If, thank you for persevering if you, if you stayed all the way through. Um, this week, Father Tamin's having a, a well-deserved and well-earned break. So um, he's been so busy with various things, funerals and, um, um, well, you know, that's obviously that's, what we do as a priest, you know, and it, you know that's a great privilege and a, a joy, but and an honour really to do those. But um, but of course he's been doing thought for the night every night and um, um, you know and all the masses. So I'm going to be he's going to have a break this week, so I'm going to do this uh, this week, and I might invite one or two people to share the thoughts for the night with me as well. Um, thank you. Have a lovely day and uh, have a great week and keep safe and um, we'll just have one last hymn which is bind us together Lord because we need to keep together in these times here we go bind us together Lord bind us together with cords that cannot be broken Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. There is only one God, there is only one King, there is only one body, that is why we sing. 
shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia.